Happy holidays, everyone. To one and all, ho, 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 Merry Christmas. It is the Is This Love <laughs> podcast where we try to navigate and sleigh ride through the weird, wonderful world of love and relationships. We are your helpful little elves. I am Francis, a.k.a. The Other Guy. And, of course, we have Mrs. Claus and Mr. Claus, who is uh, Pete the Podcat, Sarah <laughs> Maid. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Francis. Uh, it's it's the holiday season, and we have a gift for the people out there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess it's not a gift. Maybe it isn't a gift, but it's it's it's, it's as close as we're going to get to a gift. Um, mm-hmm. Well, I get you look. It, 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 no beating around the bush. This is a, a show episode that I entitled the penultimate episode. And what does that mean? Well, mm-hmm. I think you figure it out. This is the episode before the last episode, the final episode of the show. Is this love podcast an experiment that we did to kind of talk about? Love and relationships, because Sarah and I have a lot of fun conversations regarding that stuff, and we thought we could put it in podcast form. But unfortunately, as always, because look, life is what it is, and it gets busy, and it gets complicated, and at some point, you know, this is not for this is for people with way too much free time, <laughs> <laughs> and some people don't always have all the free time, so we didn't want to deny. The listeners, uh, and a reason why, like all of a sudden, this podcast drops off the face of the earth, um, with uh, the holiday season, especially being a busy time for pretty much everyone. It'll just continue to get busy after that into the new year. So Sarah and I have decided that it would be good to do at least one other episode. So you're not going to be side, you know, blindsided when the last episode it comes out next week. And you're like, wait a minute, this is the last episode. We're kind of explaining it now, <laughs> letting you know that it's the last episode because, again, life gets busy and we have some busy, 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 busy lives happening in the near future. But we do want to say thank you to everyone who's been downloading and listening, uh, to all the people who have been uh, able to participate and share some some questions. And uh, look, this is your last chance. Because I don't think Sarah's going to get rid of it. Sarah Nade dot and dot Pete. Just follow it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> just do it. <laughs> Who knows? Now's the now's the time, and you never know. We might come back to this in the in the far future uh, when things settle down. Um, but at this point, probably in like a year from now. Uh, we'll we'll just have too many things going on in our worlds that yeah it, it it's better that we end this show on our terms. So listen to next week's episode because it's going to be a doozy. Yeah, yeah. Sarah and I, I know Sarah <laughs> hasn't been saying much right now because I'm making the announcement, but but we're going to be pretty much kind of sharing our thoughts and feelings of this experience. Because this is your first oh. time. This was your first time ever doing a podcast, ever, right, Sarah? Yeah, it was really fun. I I really enjoyed it, and do appreciate everyone who's been sending in questions. That's been really fun. It's been an interesting and fun experience. Um, I've been doing this for ever. Uh, I have no. Unlike Sarah, I have no life. <laughs> She has a life. I do not have the, a life. That's and... not true. <laughs> yeah, I know you're very busy too. Yeah. No. Well. Well, I don't know about that. I have enough. T- I, I. I do too many of these things. I mean, I'm on. I. I do this at least out of seven nights. I'm doing three of my nights are are doing something like this. Sometimes mm-hmm. four, depending on like oh if things gosh. come up, right? So like it's that's a lot of nights out of the week when most people kind of just sit at home and watch TV or like, you know, actually relax, you know, like Mm -hmm. I'm here record, you know, I'll record with you. And then there's a whole day where I edit and, and fix things and stuff. So that's a whole other, like, that's another night of work. And it's like, it's a lot of work. Yeah. There's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff outside of just the recording. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a lot of stuff, but look, we are, um, we're, we're, uh, you know, we had a lot of fun. He said we're going to really dive deep into it next week. But for now, we're going to kind of make this a, a little bit of a regular episode because, again, 
we have the holidays in what two weeks. I I don't know about you. I'm not in. I'm not into it at all. <laughs> I'm not in. No. I'm not in it at all. I, I'm no. I think it's my first year where I'm actually kind of hating it. Um, in all honesty. Oh yeah. Well, I'm trying to get people to get all organized for my Secret Santa. Oh yeah. Which is hard because um, it's difficult for people to figure out like what they want. What I like to do, I think I told you last week, is just get everyone's Amazon wish list to make it really easy for people to do Secret Santa. You just have to pick one gift for one for one person from one list, right. and that's it. But people get like a little bit, I think, stressed out or pressured when they're like, I have to come up with things I want. It's like, just pick something silly for under $30 that would be kind of fun to get. But it's yeah. still hard to come up with on the spot. So I've been kind of like trying to get all that together without pressuring people too much. And yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of where my head's been at holiday gift wise. Uh, but I've almost got it all sorted out and it's going to be really fun. I think mm -hmm. when we get together and everyone just gets one fun present. I, I look, I love that. I, I did that with, with when I did that the, with uh, my friends many, many years ago. Um, <clears throat> we did that with the secret Santa. That's fun. It's, I don't know. It's just fun to be able to really surprise yeah. somebody and kind of step outside of even the list. Sometimes I know a list is a great template of like what to get somebody, but sometimes you can, you know, step out for a second and be like, okay, well, I'm going to get you. I know what you kind of like and you kind of said these are the things that you want. I can kind of work off of that and think of something creative. So, oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm doing something similar for a, a holiday party uh, with the, some new friends that I've made recently. They, I was invited and, and one of the requirements <gasps> was to Yay! make... Well, yeah, that was, yeah. Uh, no, well, yeah, I was invited a long time ago, luckily. I just never brought it up. But yeah, well, luckily, yeah, it's I thought nice. you had nothing to do. I'm so excited for you. Yeah, I mean, I have nothing to do on the day of, luckily. Like, the day of is going to be quiet, which is nice. I, I don't mind that. It's But yeah, it's going to oh, be yeah. in like a few yeah, weeks. Yeah, me too. Yeah, in a few weeks, it's going to be <laughs> a little thing. And the requirement is, and I'm stressing again about this part, is the, you bring a little gift, but you also have to make something. So you have to be creative and make a thing. And I'm like, I don't know, I don't know what to make. <laughs> I love that so much. Yeah. Oh, I wish I could switch places with you just for that. Just for that. Yeah. So it's make a thing plus add stuff to it. So I got the stuff that I, I already bought stuff for it. So I already have kind of some like, I wouldn't say generic, but they're more like universal type of gifts like okay I, I i'm pretty sure people in general like this stuff unless they're allergic to it then maybe not so much <laughs> but hopefully not oh i wish i was your neighbor and i would cheat for you and, and do it for you do the crafty part i would love that because i'm not <laughs> hand like I, I was gonna say i'm not handsy but i am handsy that's my problem oh my god um, <laughs> crafty <laughs> craft yeah, that's right. crafty, crafty also is has another meaning right but that's <laughs> fun that's yeah. fun being crafty I'm not, but I'm not, I'm not like, I'm trying to think my guess is this is my, this is what I'm thinking of doing because it's the only thing I know what to do with my hands is I know how to make, <laughs> this is going to sound really stupid, but I'm, I know how to make origami, um, lilies or something, right? Like Easter. So I'm thinking, of I'm thinking of making a bouquet of that, like painting them and like putting them in like a little pot and like having them as like a bouquet of something to give alongside, you know, because there's a story behind That's it. That's amazing. It was, it was I what, love it. This was, you know, we talked about um, our uh, first relationships or whatever, right? And I said, oh, at, 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 at the ripe old age of 12 years old, I had a, a girl who was, you know, uh, kicked me in the shins. But she also taught me how to do origami flowers and that's what i've mm -hmm. i've held on to it for 30 years to make these flowers i might as well put them that's to good so use cute. yeah well, we'll see <laughs> we'll see well, <laughs> no just get started now and then it won't be stressful at the last second it, yeah i don't need because i don't even i mean that's my plan i don't know if i'm gonna really do it but if i mean that's something at least i know oh God, i made for my it. own all right okay. yeah okay but you don't even need to paint them you can just go out and get some nice origami paper and it'll be pretty that's a good it's point i could get colored paper right or yeah origami yeah. paper yeah yeah when you get into like painting stuff that's when crafts get to get serious that's when they get intense well so 
out of curiosity, if you were my neighbor and you were going to make this, what were you? What would you have made for me? Out of curiosity. Well, I know you probably don't want to say it because it might spoil the surprise, but it would depend on what you, the bot thing was, probably. Oh, okay. or do they have nothing to do with each other? Are they totally unrelated? Uh, no, they're not. There's no relation to what I bought and and this this. Uh... There's not supposed to be. They're not supposed to be connected at all. I mean, I guess I could have. Well, I, I, I will tell like you, do I don't mind like saying that. it because by well, the time this your friends co- hear it, but by the time it come out, it'll be the weekend of the thing. So when they hear oh, it, it'll okay. be the day they get it. <laughs> okay, you sure? So, I, like yeah, ruin the surprise. Okay. No, it's really generic stuff. Like to me, it's just like okay, this is kind of universal, and I'll show it to you because it's it's harder to explain. So okay, I got for as is tradition in the UK, you give a Terry's chocolate orange. That's one. Yeah. Okay. And then I went to this sweet shop, and I found this really cool drink that has Bob Ross on it, and it's called The Joy of Calm, and it's a Bob Ross drink, and I thought, that's really funny. But I'm like, <laughs> but maybe maybe the person isn't into calm. So I got Liquid Death, Buried Alive, Bury It Alive. Oh so I got one of each as kind of like a like a little gaggy thing. Right? They're, they're, but they're like really kind of universal like beveragey you know candy is this um is it, did you say this is a uk themed party it isn't is there's no theme there's oh. no theme to it i got that stuff because everything i do has to be off of a joke of some sort the, the, the only thing i thought that was normal is this because i'm a i'm an anglophile i like uk stuff those are so delicious yeah, yeah. so i got this i love those but the drinks i'm like these are funny I'm, I like a good joke. I will do the joke thing. Um, is this a like a white elephant thing where you don't know who's gonna? Yes. Yes. Get what? Okay. Yeah, yeah. And is it one of those things where people can swap out gifts? I don't know. This is my first time doing. Okay. It. So I. Will. Um, what would I make? Yeah. I don't know. See, I'd have to brainstorm. I, I would t- need to take like a couple days to mm. think about it. I would probably come up with something, but. Knowing their, um, let's see, knowing that the vast majority of these people are are very like my kind of nerdy, right? Who who know like what D and D is? Who knows like, um, like they, they're into that kind of really geeky nerdy world. Would that would that help mm-hmm. in any way, shape, or form in in what you would potentially make? I would add it to the brainstorm list okay. for sure. Well, you can tell me then. <laughs> On the the oh, I do have to come up with it, huh? The final episode. It's well, it's just a fun be little something. Thing. I would. Ex- it's not going to be something I would expect you to make. By the way, I think you should do the flowers. I think that will be nice. I'll do that. Well, that's the one thing I know how to make. <laughs> I mean, because I'm not going to write them anything. Because I don't know who I'm, who's going to get what, right? Because it's a surprise. So I, if I knew who if I knew who was going to get the gift, at least I'd be able to personalize it. But hmm. you know, maybe do some poetry or something. Um. But, yeah, I will do that. So, anyway, a reason to come back for the final episode as we <laughs> find out what Sarah would make for me <laughs> Man. as a gift. Yeah, it's pressure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pre- what? It's a gift that's not going to be made, that's not going to go to anyone. That's after I the know. fact. That's, that's, that's after true. the fact. <laughs> that's so it's true. Okay. Yeah, it'll be all I right. guess it, I guess it could go as crazy as I want, like make a car out of D and D dice. <laughs> I mean, no. <laughs> no I, I, I mean, sure. <laughs> I totally do that. <laughs> ideally, though, ideally, it'd be something that you can actually that I could actually cra- mimic, as opposed to having to. I guess. No, I think the rule is that I would have to be able to make it, That's and true. no, That's I would not point. be able to make that. I would not be able. To- <laughs> A car out of D&D Here's two million dollars worth of dice. Enjoy making a car from these dice. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that would be that would be rough. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, look again. I will I will figure that what that part out, and I will make my my thing. I have to. I just have to get a a, a potted uh, like a little clay pot, and I think I'll just do it that way, and that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, perfect. Maybe I'll even like write little inspirational things inside, or so I don't know. Add it even more, and make it like even more complicated than it needs to be. We'll see what happens, though. Anyway, uh, 
So there you go. Uh, if you would like to let us know, because this is your chance. This is your last chance to tell us. <laughs> yeah. This is lowpod at gmail.com. Uh, send us an email, and I will talk about it on the final episode Wait. of the show. What? Don't <laughs> Is anyone even going to hear this episode until after the <laughs> we record the other one? Oh, that's true. Again, oh I said anything. God. Sarah has a really good point. Because uh, uh, oh my god, unless you unless you write in like Right Cow does, the day you <laughs> listen to this episode, you're not going to be able. <laughs> Can you put something on Twitter or something? Yeah, I think I'll put. I'll I'll. I'll I'll figure something out. And uh, yeah, or you can do some on Instagram too, or something. Yeah, we'll, we'll maybe we'll ask a question. We'll see. Let's see what we let's see if we remember <laughs> at the end of this episode for us to even okay. do that. The funny thing is, we'll probably end up forgetting because we'll say something silly and fun at the end and completely forget. <laughs> That's very likely. <clears throat> you know what though? What we don't forget are the questions that people ask us. Um, we we appreciate everyone who has uh, contributed throughout the. Uh, 35 episodes i guess by the time this is done. no 34 by the time this is done uh so a year of of is this love podcast and wow. we have a few more and again this will probably be the last i guess the last questions we'll be asking before aside of right cows questions um mm-hmm. for the for the show so let's come up with really amazing brilliant answers for these following questions Okay. Ones that'll blow the pants off of people, their minds exploding like a like a small mushroom cloud on the top of their head. They're like, "You're right. I should have known that. That makes perfect All right. sense." I'm, All right, we have some genius answers here. The pressure's on. <laughs> <laughs> is, is this love, love questions? questions? All right. So the first question is: What are some ways to build trust in a relationship? Mm. Oh, the the key, the the big word, trust. Trust. <laughs> so I have a question for you. <clears throat> mm-hmm. You're in a you're in a relationship, and um, you well, I guess I should ask this first before I I, I bring up the scenario. How, what are your thoughts on cuddling and snuggling? Um. My thoughts on them? Yes. Is there, that something you if, like if doing? You like, is that something... If I like the person, yes. Okay. <laughs> not everyone <laughs> likes to be touched that much, right? Like, not everyone likes to be, oh. you know. Like, some people, I knew some yeah. people. Luckily, no one I I was in a relationship with, but I knew people <laughs> who were like, I don't like to be touched that much. It wasn't a guy. Well, I don't like to be touched by people who are not in a relationship very much, but no, no. I don't give like <laughs> no, hugs to my friends, yeah, but no. I don't even really like to go get massages, you know? Mm. You see, have you so, never had a massage? I feel like I had one, like, sort of like the demo one in the mall where they set up like the chair. The I think de- I had one of those ones, and um, <laughs> I was actually surprised it was pretty good, but... Okay. Um, no, I don't ever really want to go get a massage from a person I don't know. What about the ones where you lay in like a, it's like a, like a, it's a bed, but it has like the top that shoots water down on your back. Like it's just like pressurized water on like so, a, on a mat. So it, it, it mimics hands, but it's just really just water just shooting down. Have you seen those? That could be, uh, no, oh. like. That that could be nice. Oh, I did get massages at this job I had. Like, we set them up. You kept your clothes on and everything. It was just like a, like, we set up, we hired a masseuse to set up their table and people could go back. And I always did it because my coworkers were like, we can't get enough people to fill up the slot, so you have to take a slot. And I hated it. Really? Because oh, it was it. a weird, yeah. uh, it was a stranger touching you. Yeah. And I feel bad because she was like really good at it. Or probably good at it. I don't know. I was just like, I don't, I'm not enjoying this at all. So I can't wait for it to be over. Right. But, um, you know, maybe the water thing would be okay because yeah. it's like, it's like taking a shower. Well, you're not, you don't, the water never hits you. You're, it's, it's, it's like a, a, a plastic mat that goes over you. It's in like a, con- a confined space. Oh, so you're that dry. That could be pretty cool. Yeah. That could be pretty cool. You're dry the whole time. 
it would kind of feel like a shower, right? Like, well, the water doesn't pressure. hit you. Well, I guess the water I'm... hits you through the mat, but you don't get actually wet. Right, yeah. but it's like the sensation of the pressure of water. Yes, but high pressure, yeah. really high pressure. Well, that's the other thing is like, oh, like people who like do massages too hard, even oh, if yeah. I'm like in a relationship with them, I'm like, easy. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I. It's too too much sometimes. I've only ever. So. Yeah. No, I only. I understand. I understand. So, what about just your feet? Um, like I like getting the foot baths at the yeah. getting pedicures, yeah. but I, I have trouble when they like are like um, scrubbing my feet and stuff. It's really tickling. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I'm guessing then you've never had the fish eat your. T- well, I don't. I don't even know where I would go to do something like that up here. But oh. no, I have not. Oh, they have. To. I mean, they have it all through L.A. and where you are is kind of similar. So it's like I'm they probably surprised. have it. Somewhere, but we yeah. go to this place where it's definitely not that type of place. <laughs> the kind that offer uh, small fishes to eat your dead skin. Yeah. Okay. They definitely don't. Yeah. Not, well. Yeah. Look, like, not, not, it's not for everybody. That's for sure. Um, yeah. No, I've ever uh, only ever gotten massages twice, and both times I was either fully nude or semi-nude and that's an interesting experience no, nothing weird happened but it is weird yeah when the <laughs> lady is like touching all of your like not your bits but like your butt like they get to your butt like they're massaging your butt and they're like oh all right <laughs> that's a new that's yeah, a new no sensation thanks. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. i mean good for you for trying it it was at a resort you know so one was at a resort and one was a friend so i'm like all right might as well try it. So, who was a professional masseuse? It wasn't just like some random person. I knew <laughs> I was say. their 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 job was to be a professional. What was a professional uh, uh, masseur <laughs> masseuse? So it wasn't like just I was just hanging out with a friend, and we were like, "Why not?" <laughs> so I did have a friend who was like that. Who was like he was a dude who was very co- overconfident about his massages. And that was like kind of his excuse to touch the ladies. It's like, hey, I can give you a good massage. Oh. Jeez. But they were genuinely good, according to them, because they were like, oh, actually, this feels really like that. You got rid of knots and I feel more relaxed. And, and it's like, yeah, <laughs> but I get to touch you. <laughs> like, all right. Yeah, I knew people like that in college. Yeah. So the reason why I ask about the cuddling thing is because there there was, I don't know if it still exists, there was an app called Cuddler where you could hire a random person oh, to cuddle. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I know what you're talking about. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> so you would not. Okay. So if you're, if you're. I mean, I don't even know how. Is that. I always thought like, is that job very safe for the people who are doing it? I have no idea. I'm assuming there was one woman. I remember before the app existed who like advertised in newspapers and I think Craigslist or something before apps were a thing to be a professional cuddler and they would it would be at an office and the require and the the, the it was clothed obviously <laughs> but right. you you just cuddled with this woman um for you know x number of dollars per hour uh, and she apparently made a lot of money doing it, but yeah, I was just curious because it's about trust, right? Can you would you trust someone you were in a relationship with to be like, well, look, we're away, you're away, I'm in another, I'm in another country, not a country, maybe just another state or something, and, and it's like, well, uh, I don't know, I can't sleep, I need to cuddle. <laughs> so I, I was just worried. <laughs> I would be worried if my significant other couldn't go without touching someone <laughs> just because I'm not in the same right. area as them at that time. Yeah. That's not a good sign. Well, I it, it, it got brought up because I'm, I'm listening to this old radio show and one of the – this producer who had a girlfriend who doesn't like cuddling, is not – doesn't – actually doesn't like the oh. act of cuddling, was like, but he did. And he's like, well, I just want to cuddle – you don't want to cuddle with me. Would it be okay if I'd use this? And That's mind a you, it's different. Yeah, 
I mean, that's like you're never going to cuddle. Right. Um. I mean, I don't. I wouldn't. I'll never be in that situation no. because I'm not the kind of person who's like. You'll, you'll, I, I you'll don't cuddle. like cuddling. Even, yeah. Yeah. With my significant other, I do. But. <laughs> I, I like that you keep I, saying I, that. I, I know. <laughs> Emphasis. Well, we're bringing up the cuddling service. Yeah, that's true. Um, if I wouldn't do it, I mean, it's technically like technically a non-sexual service so i mean that's what they say you know that's kind of how they sell it is this is a non there's no happy ending it's a non-sexual service the whole purpose of the service is to provide not necessarily a companionship but just somebody oxytocin uh, right exactly right a pillow i guess is not enough right I don't know. I guess I don't know what it would be like to not like cuddling if that would also include saying you're not allowed to cuddle anybody, even though even if it's not sexual, that seems a little that seems a little bit prohibitive because it's not sexual. Right. Exactly. And so it's not like you're saying I won't do this one sexual act so you can go do that with. You know, you can go hire someone to do that with you. This is a bit different. So, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Well, I guess from the words of the great meatloaf, you'll do anything for love, but you won't do that. I understand. Um, so when it comes to building trust in a relationship. Yeah, I just, I feel like we haven't answered that. <laughs> How would you build? Uh, what would you do to build? Okay, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Only got a couple more episodes. Got to get my tangents in somehow. Um, okay. Okay. Fair so enough. yeah, wh- where would you? Uh, what are some ways to build trust? Well, I guess it's interesting that that question is a thing because that means that the tr- either trust was lost, or how do you just? I don't well, know. Like, or you could you could have a significant other who has a hard time trusting people, or no, that's interesting. Yeah, you could just say. You know, my last relationship suffered from a lack of trust, so I'd like to make sure I do it right this time. Right. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of reasons why you could be wondering this, I think. Well, I mean, but... I, 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 I was in that scenario, so I get, I get it. But, all right, well, for yourself, then, how, did you, how are ways that you have built trust? Well, I think there's a lot of little things, mm. like um, being true to your word, showing up when you say you will. Um not lying you know being honest not lying (laughs) damn yeah not like giving all these little excuses and everything and trying to get out of every like uncomfortable like even tiny ones even little i mean you know we talked about the white lies before and it's okay to tell someone they look nice even if it's not your favorite outfit in the world but um you know not just coming up with a excuses off the top of your head when you don't want to be a hundred percent honest for stuff, because they'll pick up on that. Um. So basically, you're you're proving that your word is true. You're true to your word, and that you have integrity. Mm-hmm. Um. So a lot of actions here. So, so a lot of yeah, a lot of actions doing. Speak louder than words, right? Like yeah. you can say that you're trustworthy, mm-hmm. but. And you should say that you're trustworthy. You shouldn't be saying, eh. <laughs> well, here's a question. <laughs> so let's say you're in a relationship with somebody and that person is very, is honest with you, right? Tells mm-hmm. does, does and says that they will do a thing with you. But with other people, has a constant tendency to lie to them. Oh, I'm busy. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, I'm whatever. To get out of doing things. Does that erode trust because you know at least – or you have – at least you can tell from what you can tell they're truthful with you? Or does that become suspect when they are not constantly but enough where they're just con- just like – I said the word constantly again. Like, where they're just telling somebody, hey, um, I don't like – I don't want to do a thing. Therefore, I will lie to you and say that I'm busy or I will lie to you and say that something else has come up or whatever. Not not necessarily well, saying you're putting you in the in th- throwing you under the bus and being like, well, I can't because Sarah, you know, has a thing, so I can't go to your party. Sorry. Right, <laughs> that would be a problem. Right. That would be like, okay, stop saying it's my fault. Right. 
that would be a problem right, for right, me. Right, but, but yeah, if I noticed they were just like, I that would be a point of concern because I would wonder, are they only being truthful for me to me now because we're in the beginning of the relationship and eventually I'll be just like all these other people to them that they lie all the time to. I might, it it might be helpful if they like told me why they were doing this. You know, yeah. I told my mom that I can't make it, even though that's not true because, you know, you don't know my mom. She is yeah. X, Y, Z. And she has, we have this problem with our relationship. And if I tell her the truth, she will never let me hear the end of it. Or she won't talk to me for three months. You know, I mean, there could be a well, reason if they're honest with you, right? Because they're honest with you, they're telling you why they're di- making the they're they're fibbing to to their family and friends. What if that's the case though? They that they will explain to you every reason why they'll lie to their family and friends. <laughs> they're like, "Hey, this is why," <laughs> but they keep well, doing then, it, and they're yeah. like, "I'm just gonna be honest with you though, <laughs> and tell you exactly what's going on." It depends on like the, I guess. Um, it's how, I think in that case, it's like how you feel in right. that moment. You kind of have to judge it. Like, you feel like, okay, they just, they have a problem with um, honesty with these people in their life because right. of some sort of dynamic in their relationships. I think they should be more honest. I would right. love to see them do that, but yeah, I can see that that, I could see or feel that that's different than how they interact with me. I guess you just kind of have to gauge that and see. And if that is the only kind of lie they're telling people, then I mean, what is the worst that's going to happen in the future? They're going to tell you they can't do things. They actually probably could, but they're just being lazy or like they uh, just want a night off or something. And Mm -hmm. they are afraid to tell you, I mean, that's, that's not great. You'd probably want to say, Hey, let's, you know, communicate better. But if they're lying to other people about big things and you're like, well, that's what they could be lying about to me in the future. That's more concerning. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, building trust is a tightrope. If the person has experience, you know, because sometimes it, it uh, the, the expectation go above and beyond sometimes. Um, I, and I'm only speaking from my own experience because yeah, it took me a very long time. It still takes me a long time actually, uh, uh, to, to trust. As a matter of fact, I kind of, I used to be, uh, a person who would trust off the bat. Like that would might be my default. It's like, well, you've earned my trust before mm-hmm. you lose it. Like that's kind of how it works. Mm-hmm. And now I'm just like, well, I don't, I mean, it's more like the opposite. Now I feel like everyone more or less, I don't know. I, I, I kind of fall, I kind of go back and forth actually. Cause I'm like, I can't say that I'm like that with everybody. Cause some people, I just feel like, well, look, I've seen how they are around other people. I feel like I can trust this person, but if it's a real, it's like a, a stranger completely who I don't get to see that much interaction from, then yeah, I maybe I'm a little bit more uh, hesitant to trust right off the bat, but I have a tendency <clears throat> I think to try and trust and 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 believe people until they break the trust. But I think breaking the trust for someone like me who has had my trust broken by too many people, it's it's pretty severe if my trust is broken because it's just like wow. Mm. Um you know, I don't have a, a very good opinion. Now, mind you, little white lies, I don't care. <laughs> Obviously. Right. If, some, if, it's, if it's tiny, I don't care. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. Um, unfortunately, I haven't encountered anyone who's felt they've had to lie to me. But it's also why I have a really hard time believing th- not like a person, but just, you know, stuff in general. Like, oh, a compliment or whatever, you know, people think, Oh, you're just being modest. Well, you just accept the compliment already. It's like, well, I don't know if you're manipulating me. <laughs> like, part of my head oh, is like, right. oh, I, I'm yeah. still working on that. <laughs> right. Cause you know, that's tricky. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's tough, but uh, I think Sarah, you, you give or some, you know, you, you kind of hit it out of the park with saying like, look, if you can through action, 
prove to be consistently trustworthy, trust can definitely be built through that method. And I think that's kind of the best way to do it. Don't just say it. Excuse me. Do it. <laughs> yeah. Demonstrate that they can count on you consistently. Yeah. Yeah. If you're going to, you know, um, I try to, even though it's not, it's not always great, but like I try to be on time for stuff, right? Like I want to be on time for things because I want to, oh, I want I'm people to, that. <laughs> well, but I mean, I'm using the word try though, mind you, I'm not saying I'm accomplish it every time. <laughs> so, so I'm with you on that one. Being on time for stuff is sometimes hard. Uh, so, but I do my best to be as on time and as prudent as possible because then I want to be reliable. In in addition to be, you know, that's that's what I think is is trustworthy. And sometimes, you know, in my at vague's attempts to to try to be like trustworthy in my end of work or in front of people, I have a tendency to over explain. And over, like, well, here's proof. Like, I try to, even though proof isn't usually necessary, I can just say it, and it's true. But sometimes I'm like, no, here's proof. I did, you know, just so that, like, believe me, please. Like, you know, I need you to believe me, even though you probably already do. <laughs> and I'm just right. going overboard because, you know, I know how it feels. Um, but anyway, so, yeah. No, keep, keep uh, it, it, you know, keep. Just being consistent as much as you possibly can. Foibles, fumbling will happen every once in a while. Um, and yeah, uh, try to be, just be, I mean, honesty is tough sometimes, but yeah, honesty, you know, don't tell them they look fan of those jeans. Don't do that, but, you know, let them know that, <laughs> <laughs> let them know, hey, <laughs> when I tell you something, I, I usually mean it. So there you go. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What's the next question? How can you avoid excessive fighting in a relationship? Ugh, fighting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad we have. Uh, you know, trust is kind of positive, right? You're building trust, but boy, oh boy, fighting. So. And happy. then comes the fighting. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we're hitting both sides of the spectrum when it comes to to this. Uh. So fighting. Uh. You don't have to tell the story, but I am curious. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been in a fight where you had to leave a room or you couldn't talk to the person and you're just like, nope, nothing. Can't do this. Gotta go. Otherwise you would like to yes, implode. Okay. But I was like, I need to go out mm. for like 10 minutes and I will be back. I learned that that's really important. I don't think I did that at first, but it really stressed them out. Right. Like, and there's different people have a different level of tolerance for, um, I don't, I don't even know what you would call it. Like there's things people do in fights. There's, st there's all this, it's like a very uncomfortable balance or disbalance. Um, like stonewalling or just like walking out and saying nothing or ghosting. Mm. I feel like these are all things that can really stress another person out. And I think they're almost used to do so almost used to sort of punish the person or make them feel bad because oh, yeah. you don't. Yeah. Cause you don't feel good. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just, it's very, it's very cruel. It's unnecessarily cruel to put like, you're already both upset right now, but to, add this extra layer of like, it's kind of like an abandonment anxiety onto somebody. Mm -hmm. This anxiety we all have inside of us is like, you know, just part of our psychology. So I was, when I was with this person who, you know, I fought with sometimes I would be like, I'm just, I'm walking out. And I did not realize at first how badly that like affected him until he like, like you can't just leave. I don't know when you're coming back. I don't know if you're coming back. And I'm like, I had no idea that it was like unclear. I thought you knew I was just going to come right back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yes, I have left the room, but I learned that it's, um, I mean, if you just like have to walk out of the room that happens, but like mm -hmm. if I had to go for a walk or something, I would say I'm going out for a walk and I'll be back. And I think that was a very extreme case, but, if you have to end a fight or if you have to walk away from a fight for like a long period of time, I think you do need to 
say, you know, we, we can come back to this or I need to pause in a way that they know that things can continue later because right. you do have to walk out of a fight sometimes, but you also have to like, you have to talk again later, you know? I I, I, I realize that, but boy, that's quite the level head there, Sarah. <laughs> I w- it didn't always, you know, I, I really did have to be with someone where I had to have like this very extreme version of it where I saw how distressed it made them. And I really had to be very, very careful about what I said because it was because of their past too, like their childhood that caused them to be so upset by this kind of thing. Right. So, yeah, you know, it, it's we're, we're psychological, you know, puzzles, all of us. <laughs> no, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, we are hard to figure out sometimes. Uh, yeah, because for me, I, I've... I, you know, excessive fighting. It's so it's kind of funny because I feel like excessive fighting is is the precursor to a, a relationship kind of ending because uh, it, it, it's, it's there's no it, it's not tr- it's not lessening in frequency. It's growing in frequency, <laughs> right? That's that's yeah. excessive, right? Like it's getting to the point where you're fighting every day, and that happened with my you know with my ex wife at the end of the relationship. It used to be we would fight every, like, once a week, right? It, it started off, actually, for, for the first, like, six, seven years, we fought once every few months, right, about something. But it was it was ridiculously rare and ended really quickly. But as things got more destabilized, you know, the fighting became more and more frequent. It, it became less reasonable than Sarah's who are we took a second to step out of the room or whatever to come back like you know because my my wife my ex-wife was very is I don't know I guess is aggressive right wanted aggression wanted to be able to 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 really fight it out that's how her life was right so to be someone who was with someone who was so passive like it was it was difficult and um, I, I don't think, you know, I'm glad I haven't really had, uh, well, I haven't had to fight anyone really that much, you know, not to say that my last relationship with the, with my previous girlfriend, you know, didn't have some fights every once in a while. And I had to really think about it too, because, you know, I, I, I feel like. Unless you unless you know how to kind of calm yourself and kind of think of things reasonably, I think a lot of people's instincts, as you see on t- in TV, as you see on social media, as you see like in public, is to be uh, aggr- uh, just outbursts and a lot of like being loud, mm-hmm. right? Because you're, you're not thinking straight anymore. You're angry. You're upset. And so fighting often leads to like uh, outbursts, and it's unreasonable. <laughs> it's not a good thing, obviously. Right? You don't want that to be. The, you don't. You don't want that to be the thing. And so, you know, here you are. You're 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 angry with your significant other, and emotions are high, and you're like, I want to just yeah. scream and yell. And oftentimes that happens. Um, at least from you know. At, at least from again people who are less reasonable who know that you need a timeout who knows who knows that you need to step away to be able to, to kind of talk it through uh, oftentimes from my own experience and from seeing other people it's like no whoever yells the loudest is the most right in an argument mm-hmm. which is obviously not the case but right that it has a tendency to go that way so yeah when it says, I don't like the the question either in the sense of avoiding excessive fighting, because that means that there's, you know, really you're invo- avoiding problems. It doesn't sound right. Right. But I think you can do things that lessens fighting or makes mm. them less uh, less fights and more like conflict resolution or some other nicer feeling way of dealing with conflict. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I think I jumped the gun a little bit in answering this, like in the answer to this question when I was talking about like 
you know, stepping away, but like, but like making it known whether you already know this is your routine or you say out loud, like I'll be coming back because I think that's one of a few different ways or a few different methods of like healthy communication. And there are, a, there's several, right? Right. So it's really good to learn them. Yeah. And if you need a therapist, you know what we <laughs> like to say. <laughs> we are root, root, root for the therapy. Yeah. Yes. Get it, get it. So totally. they can help you with that for sure. And I think also bringing up issues you have before they get too big, you know, in that respectful, yeah. healthy, communicative way that you've learned because a lot of times people just ruminate on stuff and they're like, I'm going to explode or, right. you know, this is just, this is too much. I can't handle it. So that's, I think that's a, that's a part of it too. It's, it's not like you're trying to make more problems by bringing stuff up before it's gotten to a fight point. Yeah. You might have to think like, is this really a big enough deal to bring it up? You might have to think that, but. Yeah if it's happened more than once or it was a big enough deal to make you like upset for a day, it's probably worth saying something. Yeah. I mean, I know people are afraid to kind of bring up something mm -hmm. sore because it might bring a fight again. It's supposed as opposed to just communicating over it and talking about it. Oftentimes you want to, if you bring up something that is a sore subject, yeah, there is that underlying fear like, Oh no, we're going to start yelling again or, Oh no, this is going to turn into a fight, but it doesn't have to be like Sarah's saying, right? Like, you know, it, it really is just, this is it. This has come up several times. This is obviously an issue. This is obviously something that is causing us distress. Let's just kind of figure it out because, yeah, you're not going to always – you're two individual people. You're not always going to agree with each other unless one of you is incredibly passive and refuses to have a voice. You know, no, that's there's not gonna, good. There's going to be – yeah. I mean, ideally it isn't good, but again, you know, what? Uh, I don't know. Like uh, – relationship whatever you should be able to be voice your opinion you should be able to feel comfortable voicing how you feel about things you know you yeah. shouldn't feel you shouldn't have that fear uh and i know that sometimes that people are afraid for whatever reason and it's true it's legitimate yeah but yeah you know try to have that try to have those conversations try to have those discussions because you don't want to live with excessive fighting because I think most people can get past that if everything else is amazing, right? If, if the relationship works really, really well outside of some of these points, outside of these things that may happen not frequently, but enough to where it's like, okay, well, this is obviously an issue and it's big enough to where we're arguing about it, fighting about it, Right that it needs mm -hmm. to come up. So, yeah, I agree. And, you know, uh, yeah, Sarah's right about, you know, finding those effective ways to communicate. Because, <laughs> again, what I see isn't very effective. Yell whoever yells the loudest is not a good way of solving a problem. Not so much, no. <laughs> but, you know, I get it. I mean, I don't get angry very often. But when I do, it, it it's hard to leash them back. It's hard to leash those emotions, right? And you don't think yes. about it when everything's fine. You know, you don't think about how hard it is to kind of rein that stuff in. And yeah, sometimes it gets overwhelming. So, yeah. It's true. It's true. So, avoid. yeah. So there you go. Not just avoid, but hopefully resolve. It, it really shouldn't be avoid. It should be resolving your these problems. And just always working on yeah. getting better at it. because. Yeah. You know, fighting well is a skill and not fighting well because you win, no. <laughs> you know, fighting well because right. both people walk away happy. Right. And finding common ground and finding. Yeah. Yeah. Find, finding is not the way to go. <laughs> Even again, that's like what's funny is like, you know, there's all these um, MMA and martial arts and stuff are very popular, but they always emphasize one thing is you don't. You, you know, you fight to defend yourself. You don't fight. You don't start fights. You don't You don't go out there and look, pick fights, right? That's not the point. Same thing in relationships. You don't want to pick a fight. I know some people find it funny <laughs> or some people like to poke the bear. People just like doing that. I don't understand why. Um, well, I guess I do, actually. I kind of understand why. But don't. hopefully you don't poke it to the point where it's like full-on fighting. If you're doing it to be 
playful good. But man, sometimes I just wonder, like, ah. Oh. <laughs> or maybe they're well, doing it for views. I don't know anymore. Because <laughs> sometimes I'm like, oh, they're doing it for views. They're doing it for the, for the gram. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, I think if you if it actually is starting real fights, not just performative fights, yeah, then it's probably best to stop that that level of playfulness. <laughs> yeah, there was this one. I I was so in shock, but apparently they're they're a happy, healthy couple. And uh, we'll move on to the the next segment. There was this guy who had like a little toy bow and arrow, and every time his wife would enter a room or something, or do something. He would have little pouches of what looked like either white liquid or powder. And he would shoot them so that anytime she did something, like, unexpectedly, it would just cover her in this white goo. Oh, my God. And it ha- and it's a whole TikTok of, like, a two or three minutes long where he did it at least three or four dozen times. And I'm like, how is this a healthy relationship? And apparently... She does it back to him in a different... She doesn't necessarily make it a mess. Because apparently it's a mess they have to clean up together. But, like... I don't know. I feel like that... that I don't know. that. Well, and this is kind of their career, too. I right? guess so. They're making money off of it. I mean, they have regular jobs, yeah. but they're also making TikTok money off of it, too. Because they're having yeah. millions of As soon of as someone records something like this, That's part a... of the reason is for the recording. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good point. Like Bat Dad, who is, like, my favorite... <laughs> <laughs> have you seen bat dad Do you know what i'm talking about no 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 there's this guy <clears throat> he just he went by the name bat dad i don't know if he still does videos he would just have like this toy batman mask and he would just start recording and his wife would be doing something and he'll just go he'll be like i forget her name this is sharon or something sharon I need you to clean up the thing. You know, she just randomly in Batman voice, like <laughs> talk yeah. to his his wife and kids, and she would just look so done with it, and no, like not a no, like angry, but just like oh, not this again. <laughs> and he'd be recording it yeah. on his phone, and it's 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 always funny because it's never it's never malicious. It's always just him. It's quiet. It's peaceful. All of a sudden, <laughs> just that voice, and it's like okay. I found it hilarious. I would cry that laughing. Funny. That. Yeah, anyway. I'm sure he wouldn't do it as much if if it wasn't recording. So she probably gets a break. <laughs> she does. Yeah, yeah. No, she totally does. And and he, and he does it to the kids too. He, they have a couple of kids, and he'll he'll do the same voice with the kids, and they'll he'll freak out the kids, <laughs> but they get into it too because it's like, oh, it's dad doing the funny thing. So anyway, bad dad. <laughs> it's funny. <clears throat> All right. Well, right, Kyle left coast. I don't know. We're not. So I'm going to warn you now. I'm going to warn you now, because you're going to want it. You're going to feel compelled to write in. You can, for the final episode that we record in a few weeks. Or next. Well, next week for us, a few weeks for you, when you hear this or whatever. I don't know. I forget how You're time You're warning works. him too late. <laughs> no. Yeah, well, he listens day of, so he, it should be by the time. I don't. Will it? I don't. Think I, you might. You might. I don't know. But if you. But I'm warning you now. If you don't hear us reply, that's why. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Yeah. Because I think you're right. Because this is two weeks ahead. So technically you should have done it two episodes Sorry, ago. Sorry, right, cow. So your last thing is going to be from two episodes ago. So the episode you hear this week, the week of the fifth. That's the one we're going to answer. <laughs> so, okay. Right? We will answer next week's questions. Here. Right. So we'll answer next week's questions. But if they're not going to be like the final thing. And I'm, unfortunately, I will not. We will not do an episode after the last episode to answer that question. So, apologize ahead of time. But if you want to write anyway, I'll read it. I'll reply to you into the email. But uh, yeah. <clears throat> anyway, so here we go. Right, Cal, left coast corner. Um, I never explained this corner other than it's you know it's a friend of mine who is very kind to listen to my podcast and often share feedback. He's done it for. Years now, literal years, every podcast I've ever done, he's been kind enough to contribute and ask questions and really share in some way, shape, or form. Probably, um, like, I, you know what, uh, he's, a, he's a superstar and uh, love him for it, so I really do appreciate that he's been doing it for at least the last three versions of podcasts I've done, so <laughs> thank you for that. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, here we go. Uh, for the penultimate episode, some questions. We're going to hit some pretty uh, 
interesting topics. I figure might as well now because we're not going to get get a chance to in the future. So, Sarah, what is um, one of these questions? <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, Francis, this will be a good one for you to answer. What? You what do <laughs> What D and D class do you think best fits you? What D and D class do you want to do if different from what best fits you? Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know. Well, yeah. <laughs> this is yeah. There, well, there's a, a so this is a this is like uh, delving deep into the weeds of of, of geekiness because D and D is actually a pretty niche thing, even amongst like nerds. So like, it's interesting that. That it, it gained some popularity, but not enough for people to be like, "Yeah, I'm into it." Even though there is a movie with Chris Pine coming out in like next year, that I'm I always really, saw the ad for that. Yeah, I'm really interested because it's Chris Pine. He's very charismatic and dreamy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I know he is. Anyway, <laughs> um, but you know, everything I do, I'm definitely a bard, right? I, I'm an entertainer, and that's what a bard oh. does. And also. Their subclass is that they're support, right? Bards, what they do is they support a party of warriors and healers and all this stuff. But they're the ones that kind of bolster and help people out. And I hope to think mm -hmm. of myself as this, uh, that way. And I think Sarah's the same way, but less, um, like, maybe, well, actually more so, because she's more artistic than I am. <laughs> Um, but, oh. <laughs> but yeah. Is that uh, what a bard is? Kind of an art, art person? Yeah. B well, bard is the most artistic of kind of the classes because they're the musician and mm. neither of us are musicians, but we're both, are, we're both creatives and got it. that's kind of, and there's, that's their specialty. We both like to help people. That's why we did this podcast. And that's another thing that they like to do. Um, and I don't think there'd be any class better for us. But anyway, there you go. Hope that answers your question right, Cal. But we do have at least one more we want to answer before we get to an article. And what is that question? Well, Which I think is kind of silly and funny. <laughs> before that one, oh. I think you should answer this one. Which, one? which yes. is um, – because I think it probably – this is the penultimate episode. Oh, yes. Penultimate episode, this probably applies more to you. Yes. But if I were to propose a Geeks Singles panel for WonderCon, oh, right. would you want to co-host with me? Yeah, you, you know, I I would. I think it'd be good. Uh I think um more and more conventions aren't doing it. I was I I almost went to one this weekend that was supposed to that used to have a singles thing, but as you recall from our previous episode, uh it was heavily weighted towards dudes <laughs> yeah. and it was dudes who don't know necessarily how to talk to a lady so it was an interesting mix of people who are like well yeah i'm in this scenario how do i you know move forward like some people can you hear that i can hear you moving <laughs> It's not me. There's like some crazy car stuff happening outside. Oh, that's a car. It sounded like you're moving thing, something like a like a glass thing on your desk. Um, no, it's crazy sounds outside. Oh, that's well, look. It's a party. It's all I know. It's a party. Um, I'm just gonna say that. La just the last time, I, the very last time I did a, a singles thing, uh, the the people who hosted it came late. I I kind of took over my section, and. I was the only one to be like, hey, let's share, you know, maybe you don't want to share phone numbers and stuff, but Sarah, if you don't mind sharing social media, let's share some social media so we can like, communicate. And I shared mm -hmm. some social media with some men and women in which, nice. you know, uh, was, I think of the few people that I got actual in an actual exchange, I think only one is still active on social media. The others kind of fell off, but it was cool. Like it was, you know, but nobody was saying anything and nobody was request asking for that type of stuff. And it's like, somebody needs to step up and, and, and be like, yeah, let's share this stuff. Let's communicate. Let's see if we can connect because otherwise, you know, this whole singles panel is for nothing. So <laughs> yeah, well, we can make it happen. Sure. Why not? Cool. All right. Okay. Do you want to answer? We don't have to do the last question before we yeah, can just go to article. It. It's just it's yeah, so funny. I like it. it. I like it. Let's definitely do it. Okay. Um, 
if the podcat were to write serenade's dating profile what would the podcat write <laughs> well what would pete the podcat say about you if he was writing mine it would probably yeah. say i am excellent at opening cans i will also <laughs> buy you all the toys that have bells on them oh my really <laughs> well the toys with bells on them are the best um, how does how does Pete not play with them while we're recording? That's amazing. Well, he likes it when I oh when you twirl it around do them, you know, yeah. um, you know. But if you're naughty, I will spray you with water. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, if you're naughty and then you try to hide, so you can keep being naughty without me being able to oh, stop you, oh. catch you, and put you in the bathroom. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. <laughs> then I'll spray you with water to get you out. Of course. Um. <laughs> That's this is how I will how I will treat my future man. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? Uh, just yeah, your next boyfriend yeah. you have to spray with a water bottle just to get him to <laughs> stop it. Yes, oh I expect God. you to keep your nails short, and if you don't, I will clip them. Ooh, oh, <laughs> oh you are dem you are a demanding taskmaster when it comes to to Pete the podcast, but. Uh... <laughs> the question is, even the, you know, in the end, though, still loves you, right? Oh yes. Okay, good. Yes, and he would have me say also, "I always have an open lap for you." Oh, that's yeah. great. Not all cats are lap cats, so it's good. I'm glad that you have a lap cat. <laughs> Actually, yeah, he's kind of a shoulder <laughs> cat too, isn't he? He is. Yeah. I, I should also put on my dating profile. I can also carry you around like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> My shoulder. Well, oh, that's yeah. If Pete yeah. was writing it, <laughs> oh my goodness, oh no. Uh, Which no, I cannot carry adult human men around like a baby. <laughs> no, uh, it'd probably best if you didn't. Uh, not if you, not unless you want a broken back. Um, no, definitely. Not. I feel like guys probably would love it if they had a girlfriend who could carry them around, just because guys never get to get carried around. No, um. That'd be an interesting experience, I think. That'd be fun, to some degree. Yeah. What if she had like a baby carrier that was like man sized and Oh no. You could <laughs> Well look, hey, some people like that. Are you kidding me? Some people love that. So I'm not I know the diaper thing. Me. Yeah, there is a diaper <laughs> fetish out there. So I'm certain being carried in an, in like a in a pup, whatever it's called, the the pouch or whatever. <gasps> what if your girlfriend like the only thing she wanted to do like that? Let's just push you like in a stroller. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, does it look like a stroller? Um, or is it just? A... It's like it's like the kind where it's like kind of like a, a like a fabric chair where you're facing forward, like the toddler stroller. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, you're not in a pram, okay. like all swaddled up. You're okay. like in a. It's. <laughs> but it does look like a stroller, but it's like a large one. But it's like. The three, four, five, six year old stroller. And I have to do this in public? I mean <laughs> I I'm I'm certain I'm certain there's quite a few gentlemen out there who'd be like, Where do I have to sign up for this? Uh Sarah, is this your secret fetish? <laughs> is this what there, is there, no, like... but it would make me laugh so hard. <laughs> I saw it. Well, um I'm certain I've never I've never seen it. Uh <laughs> but I wouldn't be surprised if they did that in private for sure. Oh my goodness! It has to be in public. It has, it has to, to be, be in public. It has, to, it has to be in public at Disneyland. Uh, no, uh, yeah, no. Uh, well, there you go. Make Sarah's dream come true, and a couple who already likes to do that, do that in front of Sarah <laughs> when she least uh, expects it for her birthday. Just be like, "Happy birthday, Sarah!" Here's the guy. Yes. Here's here's a woman pushing. <laughs> A man in a, in a a man in a, a man stroller. A man stroller. <laughs> oh man, there you go. There's 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 a Sarah's secret Santa right there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh man. All right. Well, look. We as we like to do, um, we like to wrap things up with an article. I gave Sarah quite a few choices this time around, even though I do. I know we held on to one, but that does not have to be the one we talk about. We can talk about any one of these that you are interested in. Um. Which I, 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 I can see which one she clicked on, so I'm gonna go click on that one as well. Oh, am I still? We're still sharing. I did not know I was still sharing with you. That's fine. Um, you did the entire. Okay. It's fine. I'm like, you know, it's not like you. All right. It's not like you're showing me anything, so it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah. 
Good story though. I like the one you picked because we're gonna end it, we're gonna end the penultimate episode with some hope, right? Yeah. All right. So what's the article that you picked? A new start after sixty. I met the love of my life at seventy-two and suddenly came alive. Mm. Aww. That's so good. I mean, look. It's so nice. A hopeful story. A one that I feel is necessary for a time where I think a lot of people, especially as we get older, you know, I think there's a lot of older singles nowadays than there were in the past. I could be wrong, but I really do feel that, like that. I, I see more and more people online, at least, and that's where I get all of my information from anyway, <laughs> is the internet. Um, being Well, didn't they say it was like with the invention of the purple pill that like senior relations like really skyrocketed it did yeah yeah so what about so this woman found someone at an elder at an older age 72 you say right yeah i think they were both married but his wife was like really at the end of alzheimer's oh yeah and her husband was like i don't like i don't even need to be near you (laughs) right (laughs) he just like wasn't really a part of her life right she had not had good luck with relationship with her mother or her first or her first two marriages Mm -hmm. but this guy she said it was just like someone who completely knew her and completely understood her and she had never felt love like this before and they ended up getting together and they were together for a few years that is i mean look i'm telling you now there is no age in which you stop trying to find love. Like you're gonna, you're gonna feel it at any age. I don't, I don't think you ever stop it. I mean, maybe it, only when you're single. Obviously, maybe. Hopefully, when you're, yeah. If you're, if you're in a relationship, hopefully you're happy <laughs> at like eight, at seventy two, right. and you're with somebody you're yeah. happy with. <laughs> right. Unlike her, with you know, who who, st- who stepped away from her husband, but. Yeah, I feel like, you know, because I, I, I wanted to look it up real quick. I, I looked up really quick o- older singles, and I looked up in the news to see if there's a number of older singles. And I, I yes, I was proven right because there is now, as of a couple of days ago or last week, um, an article from CBS saying, hey, don't give up. Speed dating service helps mature singles find love. So the women... And men, Aww. their age, are doing speed dating. <laughs> so dating yes. is still a thing into your 60s, your 70s, your 80s. And look, I'm looking at this couple. They have a picture of the couple. It's, it's a Guardian article. And They're so cute. Well, here's the other thing. They're, what, 70s, right? In their 70s? He's 80-something, right, I think? Yeah. Okay. 50 years ago, an 80-year-old would look like a shriveled-up raisin. This, oh, they look amazing. Yeah, these guys look like they're still, you know, vibrant. They're still like doing all sorts of sexy positions, you know, uh, in the bedroom. They're they're still, you know, in love. They're still vibrant at, you know, the seventies and eighties. Octogenarians do not have to give up on love. I love where we are in our world today in our society because people who are older don't look older which is a plus right yeah that's awesome we, yeah i mean look i don't even know what age she's supposed to be. she's supposed to be in like her 80s up here at yeah, this top one yeah i would not have guessed no. that well i mean look she has a full head of hair which is a surprise in general for um any person in, that are reaching into the, the 80s slash 90s. So, like, you know, there's definitely um, a lifestyle that we've adopted over the last few decades in which we are looking better, living longer. And yes, which means that we need to, we not need, but we, we definitely want to find love no matter no matter what age. And I'm a person who would like to live to be 100. I mean, I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't be angry if I got to 100 and something. Um, as long as I could yeah. still move and as long as I could still take care of myself, 
I wouldn't mind that. I'd be a happy camper. Um, mm-hmm. Will that happen? Probably not. <laughs> but, you know. Well, you never know. I don't know. I feel like I'll be crazy by then. Uh, I'll be yelling at people to get off my lawn by that by the time I turn 100. And just That's the <laughs> only thing I'll be doing is sitting in a lawn chair, just yelling at people to get off my lawn. That's like my one hobby. Um, but yeah. I love how they each have their dog. Exactly. Yeah. They're <laughs> Sa- so cute. Sarah's enthralled Aww. by the, the photos of which is included in this article. This is their wedding day. Look at their cute outfit. Yeah. They look, they look, again, they look very happy and I believe they're British, which means that they... That's why I think they're so healthy. Because <laughs> they, like, go outside sometimes. Uh, what are you trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm here, too. <laughs> yeah, no, I get you. I get you. I did. I go for walks around here. You know, I try. Try to live the European lifestyle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The Mediterra- Mediterranean lifestyle, or whatever they're calling it, yeah. Um, <laughs> look, it's I don't know. I it's it's it, this is such a nice little hopeful message for those of us who are older and are continuing to get older and be single. That um, just because we get older doesn't mean it's over for us when it comes to to love and relationships. Yeah. That we will... like. Yes, there's like a lot of people who have that feeling and at like young ages too sometimes when i'm on the like relationship question places you know like the communities where people ask for advice yeah oh my gosh people are like i'm 25 and i just broke up and i feel like it's over for me i'll never find anyone and i'm like yeah. where is this coming <laughs> from <laughs> uh, same for i mean I, I when i am in the forever alone communities these people are like 23 24 and they're like i guess i'm forever alone and never going to find love and it's like you're 24 <laughs> yeah like i understand the 40 year old are in that in that sub or like saying that like i get it but even then i still think that's still fairly young you know if you're never had a relationship by the time you've turned 80 as is evidence in this article, then maybe you can say that. But you have to have reached the age of 80, you know. But maybe not, because you might you, meet you, someone you might. and get married exactly. and each have your own dog. Each have your own dog, which is the the more, most important thing. Or have your own cat. Yeah. In Sarah's case, when she turns 80 and she finds her, her loving... Well, maybe their dog is just really well behaved and looking along with Pete. Okay, when I'm 80, I might have a dog. Who knows? <laughs> but maybe, yeah, maybe by then you'll finally you'll be like, you know what? I'll go with dog. <laughs> I mean, well, Pete is immortal, so That's he will true. just be on his little throne. That's with, true. Like the halo behind him of crazy <laughs> alien light because he's from another world. Right. But... Yes. <laughs> yes. Pete, yeah, at Pete at at the ripe old age of thirty five in cat years or whatever. No, actually, it'd be fifty something in cat years. It's like a million in cat years. Yeah. He's like the cat from outer space. Did you ever see that movie? I have. N- you you like to mention? This is your last chance <laughs> to mention weird and obscure movies, right? No, it's not. I have more chances. Yeah, next you have week. one more. Yeah, you have a whole episode. We'll just dedicate the final episode. I'm to- just gonna change every topic to movies next week. <laughs> Oh well, well <clears throat> look, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll hint at what we're talking about next week. But yeah, even though I think I did already. Um, no, seriously though, uh, the, your cat will be alive. You're gonna, you're gonna have, um, uh, you're gonna be in your 80s. You're gonna have a loving person by your side. He'll be, you know, whatever age he is. And, and the best part is because again, 30. as technology continues to progress <laughs> and get better, yeah. we're, we're all at, in our eighties and nineties, we're going to look like we're in our fifties. Like it's going to be insane. Yeah. I, I know. Like, no joke. We're, it's going to be insane that we're going to look so young at, at, at such an advanced age. I think we're actually going to be leaving. the new 50. Yeah. Well, we're, we're already doing that now, right? We're like, well, you know, 40 is the new 20. Or thirty or whatever, like we're we're putting it back a decade for like a lot of these years, when in reality, yeah. and we do, we treat it that way. So many people are in their fifties nowadays, right? Are still like playing video games and like going out and you know 
doing sportsy stuff and like hell i i think of of everyone's favorite skateboarder um tony hawk yes i don't know why i right when i said it i lost his name yeah tony hawk <laughs> at like he's i think he's almost 60 he's still skateboarding <gasps> Oh my god, that's insane! Right, he's still skateboarding at almost sixty. Like the dude refuses to but stop. But I mean, your bones. <laughs> well, he's not doing like insane tricks anymore, <laughs> right? He's leaving that up to the kid, to his kids. But <laughs> that's good. you know, he's he's fifty four years old and he's still skateboarding, right? Like he's still he has a half pipe at home, right, or whatever. Or I think he skates in his in his um in his swimming pool. He still does stuff. Like he's still doing. He's still out there. My That's favorite cool. thing, though, that he does is he's on social media, and he just uh, so, oh, the only times I've ever seen him tweet or something is when he talks about people who think they recognize him, but they are not sure. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, "Are you?" And he's like, "Yes." And they'll say somebody else, or they're like, "Oh, you know what? You remind me a lot about Tony Hawk." And then he's like, <laughs> "Well, it's because I am." It's like, "Okay, sure, yeah, whatever." <laughs> <laughs> like just that's funny people refuse like to that. believe that he's tony hawk it's like oh yeah all the encounters i love it i think he's in california too oh he is in california i should go and like add to his story go like go say hi hey tony <laughs> tony <laughs> <laughs> yeah. do it yeah maybe maybe <laughs> i don't know is there a celebrity you would want, I guess, since we're wrapping up, uh, is there a celebrity you would want to meet, like, oh, at all, just in hmm. general? I feel like any celebrity that I recognize, I would be so starstruck. I'd just be like, oh, there's not one I don't you, know what to do in this situation. <laughs> there's, like, not one you'd want to be, like, pals with, just be like, oh. Oh, friends, friends with? with? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Like, I'm not a skateboarder, but I'd totally be friends with Tony Hawk. <laughs> he seems cool. <laughs> I, you know, I don't know if you're going to know who this is, but Matthew Gray Goobler. Okay. I don't know who that is. You're right. Did you ever see Criminal, <laughs> did you ever see Criminal Minds? I did, yeah. So he was like the, uh, like the, the cute, nerdy. I know who you are. I know who guy. you're talking about now. And I also just looked him up. Yeah. He had, I don't know if he still has it, but he had this website called googler land and he just does the craziest drawings and i was like i want to know what he's like yeah it's he has he has matthew matthew greg googler.com but i don't know if that's the same and it's called googler land according to this uh front page let's see yep googler land yeah, look at his crazy drawings it, I think it was it was even crazier before. It was like he drew a whole little town, and like when you like hovered over things, they animated. Mm -hmm. He's like, um, but he's so cute too, you know. Well, first off, I love that you didn't aim for like uh, Tom Hanks or like a uh, George Clooney or like a you know. Uh... No, I want to meet someone. Like, look at his look at these drawings. He's, he's this guy's accessible. Um... Yeah, even like that his like uh, his little hamburger map thing he drew himself. This, the, uh, I mean, we're going to talk after the show, but this is kind of what I'm talking about uh, in regards to stuff that we said or, or we were talking about earlier. Like it, kind of, I I think this is the kind of like uh, style uh, that something needs. So anyway, um, wow, he even has. Uh, the I mean, and I don't know for sure, but I remember a long time ago going on, like, his social media. And, like, random, like, middle-aged moms would be like, I love your stuff. And you'd be like, thank you. Like, he would talk back to them. It was so cute. Aww. I was like, he is so awesome. Like, he talks to his fans. He's got, like, these crazy drawings. Yeah, they are very, but they're, I mean, they're very stylized, too, though. They're, I know. They're kind of, like, they're, like, creepy, but also, like, childlike. I mean, I could see these in a museum. Sorry, everyone. Yeah, like I could see at people this guy's collecting. We're looking at his pictures. So sorry, yeah. everyone. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, everybody. You know, I could see people collecting like this this art. Yeah, I can see it. I um, there you go. So cool. Yeah, be friends with this guy. Be friends with Matthew Goobler. <laughs> 
I'm going to go hang out in Goobler land. Hang out in Goobler land and, and hang out with Ma- Matthew Goobler, who um, is, uh, I'm, well, wait, well, I mean, he, he's single, so there you go. <laughs> I mean, he has no, there, there's no, what do you call it? There's no uh, barrier. Well, there's no uh, section in his Wikipedia for relationships. There's like, there's no spouse or no, you know, no, 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 nothing. It's just his height, the books he's written, education, grandparents, and siblings, which makes me think that usually they put in like if he was in a relationship, they usually put that. Oh, yeah, he's in one. Mm. For born, oh March ninth, nineteen eighty. Oh, he's he's my age. Yeah. Uh-oh, so there you go. Six foot one. Oh, he's around my height too. Nice. Oh, we're, we could be buddies. And- yeah, don't you want to be friends with him? Look at his drawings. <laughs> Anyways. For the drawings alone, I'll, yeah. I'll stop talking about the drawings. No, it's all right. <laughs> it's cute. It's fun. All right. Well, there you go. So here's the deal. Next episode you listen to will be the final one. I'm explaining to you right now why I'm doing a final episode. It's because podcasts often just kind of drop off the face of the earth, fall off the map. I, and this is my way of giving closure for myself um, because I noticed that sometimes podcasts will just have an episode and all of a sudden they just never record again. And it always rubs me the wrong way because it's like, I, I, mm-hmm. I don't need to know why they left. I just want to be able to say goodbye to them in my own way by listening to an episode that they created specifically to say goodbye. So we're going to do that next episode. It's going to be a holiday episode. So that's our, that's why I was saying it's our gift to you because it's coming out uh, the weekend before Christmas or the Friday before Christmas. In which we will be talking about all sorts of things, um, you know, impact, the, you know, doing the show and stuff like that. And we'll answer no questions. Instead, we're just going to be giving you kind of our experiences and what we hope to see in our future. And maybe answer some loose questions that were already asked that we never got around to. So we'll see about that. But we're going to make it a, a good one, hopefully. So one that you guys will enjoy, one that you think is worth your time, and one where you'll be like, hey, we want more of this. How dare you go away? In which I'll reply, <laughs> too bad. And <laughs> yeah, maybe we should make it really bad so people are glad we're leaving. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, that'll be, that'll be really difficult by how good we are, Sarah. <laughs> I don't know if we can do it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We ha- I don't know. we're talented, Zero. I don't know if we're that talented. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so thank you everyone for listening. Thank you for hanging out with us. You guys have been awesome. Uh, listen to us next week for the last episode, episode number thirty-four of the Is This Love podcast. I'd give you all of the deets, but it's not going to be much point right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> just thanks again for listening. <laughs> And we'll see you on that last episode where, um, yeah, maybe, again, if you guys ask questions before, then we could sneak some in uh, and answer them there. But for the most part, it'll just be us talking and, and sharing. And we hope you'll come there for the ride and enjoy with us. So have a great week, everyone. Happy holidays and Merry Christmas and Hanukkah and all that good stuff to you all who are celebrating. And we'll talk to you all next time. Bye, everybody.